Road Rants, Episode 7. You have to shift someone's viewpoint into the idea that the chiropractic message holds something that they need to know about themselves. And telling them the chiropractic message does not affect that change by virtue of the fact that it took you eight years to master. So what they didn't teach you in chiropractic school is not marketing and administration. It's how to communicate with people in such a way as to make them interested in finding out more. So you're learning how to motivate people into the idea that they can know more about themselves and that that is absolutely vital to their survival. If you can achieve that, you will be the most successful chiropractor who ever lived. Welcome to Road Rants Radio. I'm Frank Sardella and I'm your host of this show where I get on my soapbox and rant about stuff that's going to help you expand into your community and expand your profession. Get ready for a bit of tough love and learning. Join me now. Hey there, it's me again, and welcome back to another episode of Road Rants Radio with Frank Sardella. I am Frank Sardella, and I'm here to... I don't know how I want to call this today. I'm going to, for lack of a better way of saying it, I'm about to open up a can of whoop-ass, and I'm going to actually teach you how to open a can of whoop-ass here on this particular topic today. It's something I'm rather fired up about, uh, but only because the truth of this particular thing hasn't come out, I don't think, in a single coaching call I've ever done. I don't think I've stated this outright in all of my 20-some-odd years helping chiropractors uh, spread the chiropractic message. And I had a realization about the chiropractic message very recently. One of these things you've always known, but you didn't know you knew, so you weren't really able to communicate it to someone else so that they could make use of it as well. So... I'm about to open up a can of whoop-ass here, but I'm going to teach you how to open up a can of whoop-ass on someone else. And there's something rather cool that I realized, actually. It doesn't sound like much of a rant so far, does it? Not so bad. Frank's not going to get too medieval on us today. But if you think about it, I have a message that's parallel to your chiropractic message. Okay? You speak about the body, about innate intelligence, about the nervous system, about nerve flow, about all these things that comprise the ability for the body to sustain life. And what I talk about is the ability to sustain a relationship with people, to actually create relationships that will then be sustained. So you tap people into their nervous system, into their innate intelligence. I tap you into tapping people in to that message. But what I want to talk to you about now is the fact that you have a message to deliver as part of what you do, and you really want people to get this message. You have debated this message. You have shouted this message from the rooftops. You talk about this message in your social media, you post memes and pictures, and chiropractic is this, and chiropractic is awesome. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but people don't get that, at least not in the way that you think they do. Even in this new holistic, new agey awareness, I do yoga, and I take care of myself, and I'm into nutrition, I'm vegan, I'm this, I'm that. Even in that age right now, people still don't get you. You're still outside that inner circle, and I want to talk about how to ignore that inner circle because it's actually not important. I want you still outside of that inner circle. There is no inner circle for you to get into. And this is where we're going to reverse the polarity and we're going to open up a can of whoop-ass because you have an inner circle that you need to get people into. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about your inner circle. So you've been thinking about it all wrong and that's what my rant is about today. You've been trying to get in with the popular crowd when actually you are the popular crowd that you should be getting other people interested in. The only problem is they don't know to consider you the popular crowd because you haven't presented yourself that way yet. And that's the conversation that you lack. That's what your weakness is. If you're looking for a weakness in practice, your weakness is that. Your weakness is about creating the inner circle that other people want to be a part of, not to be part of their inner circle. And I think that for the first time ever, without getting too medieval on you, that we're going to be able to create something here 
that allows those two circles to intersect. So let's get into that today. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about the concept of innate intelligence. Let's talk about the concept of what it is you do, and for you to do that effectively, what it is that you need to communicate to people to keep them on that path. Obviously, if you want to achieve full correction, and if you want to restore health to them, hopefully 100%, if it's not too late or too far gone, you have a lot of stuff you need to cover with them. You have a lot of ground you need to cover. Many of you think you're lacking in that area, and, and that is an issue, and you need to handle that issue. You need to be able to, to educate people, to indoctrinate people into what it is you do. But what you need to understand is, that is the worst conversation in the world to lead with. It's like getting someone into season seven before showing them season one. Now, every once in a while that works. Sometimes you pop on a show and you see season seven, episode 17, and you're like, this is a cool show. I want to watch this from the beginning. Chiropractic ain't it. <laughs> Chiropractic is not something you can come in in season 14. You got to start at season one. Actually, season one even doesn't do it. This would be like if you had, I don't know, 18 seasons of a really great show. And then after that show was a complete hit, you set up a prequel. The prequel is where you need to go with the message that you want to create. I am talking about a completely different conversation than the conversation that you want to have with people. I'm talking about a conversation that needs to take place before the conversation takes place, before that chiropractic message even gets leaked out. Because the only way it can be well-received and understood is if it has that preliminary conversation attached to it. And I'm going to prove to you right now that you've gone through that preliminary conversation and didn't even know about it. It's kind of like how I led off this episode today. It's like you don't really know what you know until you really examine it. When you become really good at something, the best way to test what you know is to try and teach it to someone else. And I mean you because doctor means teacher. It doesn't just symbolically and very metaphorically mean that. The very derivation of the word, yes, I don't even mean that way. But the fact is the highest degree bestowed by any university is a doctorate degree. And there is a reason for that. People just get it mixed up because doctors of medicine are just called a doctor. So it's lost its meaning. But from university, that is the very highest degree that's bestowed upon someone, and it means that you're in the league where you have the level of knowledge where you bestow it on others, where you teach, you spread the word. It's almost religious. Go out there and get some disciples and preach, teach, enlighten. That's really what it is. But I'm here to prove to you that you actually went through this and you need to learn how to do this. And this is something that I've spent all of my years mastering. I just said that the best test of what you know is when you try and teach what you know to someone else. That's when you really learn the depth of your knowledge. Now, if I asked you to sit down and think about what you know now, you'd probably take less than a minute. I'm going to say less than 30 seconds go, okay, I know what I know. I'm ready to tell you. And you'd probably proceed to tell me in less than five minutes, maybe less than three minutes, maybe in 60 seconds, you could probably summarize what you know. And that would be a tragedy and a gross oversimplification. Because the depth of your knowledge, you really don't know until you try to teach it to someone. And now, proof positive is going to be all the times, I want you to think of all the times you failed to get through to somebody with a chiropractic message. I want you to think of all the times that it didn't get through. All the times even that you thought you penetrated and the person drops out in the middle of corrective care and you never see them again. And they never really did get it. That's proof positive right there of you not understanding the magnitude and the depth and the breadth of what you know. 
So we're not going to talk about your lack of marketing skill. The thing your education was lacking, the thing they don't teach you in chiropractic school, the thing that they don't teach you in the halls of medicine is how to bestow that knowledge. And the reason is, is because they don't know how to open the conversation. They don't know about the prelude, the prequel, the preliminary conversation that needs to happen to make the bridge over to get somebody enlightened on what you want to enlighten them on. In other words, you need to have an agreement from your audience to receive that chiropractic message. No, you know what? It's not an agreement. No, you need to have a desire on the part of that person to want to know the chiropractic message before you can start to bestow the chiropractic message on them. And even then, there's still a little bit of preliminary dance that has to happen before that conversation really takes place. That is the thing that I need you to think about. All the missing parts. Now, where does this come from? Why is this true? You've probably done as I asked. You sat down, you looked at your knowledge, you summarized it in 30 seconds. You've probably already gotten the idea there's a disconnect there. You've probably looked back to all your failures, which if you think about it, let me depress you for a second. It's the majority of the time right now. More people didn't get the chiropractic message. If you think of all the people you quote cut loose, even if you have a really successful practice, more people that you've met in your community did not get the message than did. If you look at all the quote duds or people you cut loose or whatever, there are more of those than the people who actually became patients, even if you're successful. So if you've thought of all that and you've got a little bit of an idea at this moment that, hey, you know, something's not right here, it's true. And this is the thing that's missing. This is the thing they didn't teach you. I hear the same complaint over and over and over. They don't teach us business. They don't teach us administration. They don't teach us marketing in chiropractic school. That's what it's lacking. I wish my education would have more of that. And you're looking for marketing tactics. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you, you're not selling pizza. If you're opening up a pizza shop, or if you're opening up a car wash, or if you're opening up a dry cleaners, a retail store... I don't care what it is you're opening, then you've got marketing. Then you need to vie for attention. You need to make your products appealing. Why? Why? Why is that different than you? Because those things are things people already agreed that they need. People already know they need pizza. People already want awesome looking clothing and a clean car. People want food. They want those things. Those are conversations they've already agreed to have. The bridge over has been made, who knows, way back in the caveman days. I don't know where it was. It was probably before the very first advertising campaign came out ever for a food item or for a provision or for some product that had to be exchanged or traded or sold. People have been sold for centuries on those things. But chiropractic's only been around a little over 100 years at this taping. People still don't know fully what it is, even those people who are getting it. Many of them really don't get it. You haven't gotten through to even some of your best patients. So the thing is, is that agreement hasn't happened. That desire hasn't happened, and it's because you don't know the depth of what you know. And now I'm going to prove it to you. You ready for this? Proof positive. How long... Did it take you to master your craft? How long did it take you to get good at what you do? How long did it take you to even get mediocre at what you do? Let alone get good. A lot of people will agree with me, getting good comes with experience. But before that experience, how long did it take you? It took you all of your undergrad, all of your postgrad. It took you the entirety of your college career. However many years was that? What is that, eight years? I don't even know. I know it's a long time. Even if it was six years, even if it was just four years, that would still be an insane amount of time in terms of what it took to assimilate what you now know. But here's the kicker. What sent you there to be interested in that? 
took some doing as well. So you are part of the preliminary conversation that you lack right now. And that's another thing that you don't realize. And that's the exact thing we're talking about. Because that actually explains why more people aren't interested and why you can't get through to them. All in one shot. It explains those two things. Preliminary conversation missing is why you and not the majority of people around you went to chiropractic school. The actual conversation, the thing that took you eight years to learn, the reason people aren't getting that is not just because they didn't have the preliminary conversation, but when you are having that conversation with them, you're trying to jam it into them five minutes or maybe an hour and a half worth of treatment sessions. Every time they come in, you play them a little video, you know, they're getting a summary of what took you years to master. And you need to realize that. So now that's not the can of whoop ass. We already know innate intelligence. I'm just here to remind you that first and foremost, you need to recognize what took you eight years to master. You're trying to get across to somebody, especially when you when you go out and do a screening and you're like, oh, I, all I got to do is go out and talk about the chiropractic passage. I just got to tell people that they have an innate intelligence in their body and that their nervous system, when it gets blockages and it breaks down, that anything in the body anywhere can break down and have malfunction and have all these diseases, uh, you know, creep in and, and all these common things that people suffer from and think they have to take medication for that they don't actually have to take medication. Think about how crazy that sounds to somebody. Or maybe not even how crazy it sounds, but look how much you're jamming into five minutes. You're jamming in eight years of knowledge right there into five minutes of conversation. It's just not going to work. Even with your best lifetime patient, So yes, you do have to work on quality, and yes, you can get people to get it. No, people do not need a doctorate level of education to get it ultimately, but they do need a lot more than what they're getting, and they need a bridge over. They need to want that before that even occurs. That's the can of whoop-ass that you need to open, and that's the can of whoop-ass I'm opening on you because I am done with hearing, I lack marketing knowledge. I'm looking for more clever marketing. I need more marketing campaigns. How can we get, you know, uh, Groupon or Facebook ads or, you know, whatever. And what do I say when I, uh, what, what's a good closing line? That's my favorite one. This is what people come up to me. Like, what's a good script to say? What do you say when a person says blah? How do you handle negatives on chiropractic? How do you, you know, when, when a person like is, is like totally fearful of chiropractic, how do you handle that? You know what? I don't handle any of that crap, guys. I actually go in get into the person's inner circle a little bit, feel my way around, get myself really welcome in that inner circle, and then I start to show them there's another inner circle that they want to be a part of, and I convince them they want to be a part of that inner circle. I get them interested in something that they don't know, and I get them to see how vital it is that they need to know it. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. Imagine if you had the power to create that in people. Imagine if you could make people interested enough to want to hear the chiropractic message, so interested that they understand that it's actually vital for them. In fact, it would be foolish not to find out that there's something there to be known that can open the door. That is the message you should be spreading. Now, I know I'm speaking heresy right now, and I can feel it. I'm way out here on the ledge. You guys are way over there, and I'm way out here, way out here on the edge. And the wind is blowing pretty heavy because this goes against everything you've ever been trained for. But guess what? I've done it your way. You guys saved my life, and then you taught me what you know. No, I don't have your doctorate-level education but I probably have a better education on chiropractic than most patients. And I think my knowledge even rivals what some doctors know. But I don't presume to know more than you guys. I still hold that level of esteem for you. I'm in awe of what you guys do. But I've done it your way, and it hasn't worked. I've had the same failures that you had. And it's worse off because that's my only job. I didn't have to adjust people. All I wanted to do was go out and enlighten as many people as possible, and it just turned into this tidal wave of actually making a full-time gig out of doing that. 
How cool is it that to be able to do that? Imagine if that was your only job and you didn't have to adjust anymore. I know that's not what you went to school for, but that's what my thrill is because this is what I do. So I had to fail at that and I had to figure all this out by necessity. Kind of like when you work with a patient and the standard adjustment routine is not working with that patient. Imagine if you had a case where your standard handling wasn't working with that case. You'd have to sit down and figure it out. And you know what? I've seen you do it. I know you've done it. I know you love those puzzles when they come your way. And you investigate and you figure it out. And that's what I figured out here. And what I figured out is that we have been creating for ourselves a similar uh, landscape, if you will, to when you were in high school and you were trying to get in with the popular crowd. The click, the inner circle, when you were trying to be part of the inner circle, to be interesting, to get accepted into that. And that's the mistake we make when we say we want to do marketing because marketing is not the solution to what we do. That's why I used to laugh at Yellow Page people when they came. I'm sorry, folks, those of you who don't know what the Yellow Pages are, it's a big, thick book, the pages are yellow, and it's all businesses in there, and it's a directory of how to contact them. Yes, that's called the internet now, but before the internet... That's all we had, and it was insanely expensive to advertise in the telephone book, in the, in the yellow pages. And I worked with a very major set of clinics that actually had a really large advertising budget, and we were in maybe a dozen yellow pages over the communities that we had facilities in. And these reps would come every single year. The price would be higher. I think just our yellow page ad budget alone was probably, and this is back in the early 90s, like we're talking, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 just on yellow pages. And I used to laugh at the Yellow Page people because they'd spew out all these demographics and whatever that they're spewing out to the pizza place next door as well, convincing them to buy an ad. And I told them, you guys have no idea what we're up against. And this is when I was still figuring it out on how to get into this inner circle thing. And that's when I realized we're different. People have already agreed that they want pizza. So they're going to open the Yellow Pages and look for a pizza place. People have not agreed to the chiropractic message. They don't know what it is. They don't even know we exist. So how are we going to expect them to open the yellow pages and find a chiropractor? I'm putting an ad out for the 10% of the people or less who know. The pizza place gets 100%. Everyone loves pizza. Even people who hate pizza, I would contend that deep down they love pizza. So the point is that we are not having a marketing conversation. We're looking at inner circles here. Yes, we need them part of our inner circle, and that's the part you're neglecting at this point because you're trying to get part of their inner circle and bring your baggage in with you, and it doesn't work. When you first date someone and you really like them and you bring all of who you are and you find out almost all of who they are and you really hit it off, then you meet their friends and they're into stuff you're not into, Things start to go off the rails from there because you're trying to bring your way of life into their inner circle that's a totally different way of life and it never works out. There's clash, you start to be resentful and you grow apart and things don't work. So you can never bring your own sort of inner circle stuff into someone else's inner circle and expect it to to, to gel. But that's the point. We are trying to get them into our inner circle. We're trying to be in control and get them interested in us and bring their stuff into our inner circle. And the only way you can do that is to make it desirable to be a part of. And that's what today's episode is about. And there's a lot of things that we can do to achieve that. But the basis is is you need to learn how to actually get someone interested in being part of your inner circle. And that's an entirely different conversation. It requires you to forget everything that you know for the moment. And it requires you to take it just like a hat that you take off your head and put it on a hat rack and leave it there. Literally, if you could put your knowledge inside an actual hat and take it off your head and put it on the hat rack, and now it's over there, that's exactly what you need to do. It's not even a metaphor. And it's it's... It's a tough job in the beginning because it's, it's something foreign to you. It's something you haven't been taught yet. It's something I hadn't been taught. I had to figure this out on my own. And I did. I solved it. And that's what I spend my time teaching. You know, I'm just thinking right now 
that I started out at the outset of this episode saying I was going to open up a can of whoop-ass, and I'm just wondering, why am I being so calm and relaxed right now? You know, I am actually a little bit fired up about this subject as I discuss it with you in depth. Let me tell you, sometimes this job feels a little bit like volunteer work. Because I have to tell you that dollars ain't as great as they could be in some other industries with doctors who have a lot more disposable income and a lot less of a hill to climb than you do. So this isn't really about business or money at this point. This is about providing help where it's needed and getting you to do the right thing to get others to do the right thing. So why do I have my podcast? Why do we have Will Work for Patients? Why do we have Road Rants with Frank Sardella? Why do I have chiropracticmarketingadvice.com? blog articles online, videos, explaining concepts. I've got three to four major eBooks that are floating around out there on the internet that I'm giving away for free. I've, I've done free seminars. I have very cheap discounted services that you can do. Why am I doing that? You think it's a magnet at the end of my funnel. And yes, technically it could be construed as that, but what is the real logic behind that? The real logic is no different than what I'm trying to jam down your throat. Why am I not giving you my program for free? Why am I not coaching you on the things I coach my clients on? Why am I not just talking about that right here in this free forum? Why am I not doing that? Wouldn't that just be easier for everybody? Yeah, sure. I wouldn't be able to make a living or anything. And I you know, wouldn't be able to keep the lights on. But the point is, is that why am I doing it that way? And the reason is, is because that conversation you're not ready to have. There are preliminary conversations that need to be had to get you there. And I need to drill this through you. This is the beauty of what I do. Okay, if nothing else, if you never coach with me, if you never listen to another episode of the podcast and you never, ever come in contact with me again, you can at least take away that what I do in my coaching, and what you do in your practice actually parallel each other. So what you should take away is that a preliminary conversation needs to be had, and that the actual conversation that that leads to is what you've been trained in, and the preliminary conversation is where your school let you down. It's where your education let you down. And it didn't let you down intentionally. It's just that that's not their bag. It's not their thing. We need to actually embrace the fact that you need to warm someone up to that conversation you've been taught to have. So you're all ready when you get out of chiropractic school. You roll those sleeves up. You're raring to go. You're ready to go. And you get pissed off. Did you ever have this experience? You explain the chiropractic message to 10 people. One guy gets it. Use the same words, use the same analogies, use the same explanation, the same logic, the same simplicity, same exact everything, demeanor, tone, everything. On all 10 people, one person gets it. Why is that? Haven't you ever wondered? Why doesn't everyone get it? Why don't all 10 of them grasp that message that you want them to get? I'm going to tell you why it is. The reason is... There is a preliminary conversation that needs to be had, and less than 10% of the people have already had that conversation with someone, if only with themselves, through their own research and their own gaining of knowledge or their own smarts and logic, okay? You represent that 10. Those, that one in 10 or less, that's you. You're in that 10%. So what are we going to do with everybody else, people? Are we just going to sulk about how we just can't get them under care and we're not making any money and just go out of practice? No. There's so much disaster going on out there right now. We can't lose this one. So the point is, is that you've got to have that preliminary conversation with somebody. You have got to be able to lead up to the big conversation you really want to have with them. And you can't do that without breaking the ice. And the way you break the ice is not about techniques. It's not about sales pitches. It's not about magnets and funnels and clicks and mailing lists and all that stuff. It's about starting a meaningful conversation with somebody that means something that also leads to the big conversation we really want to have and leads there logically 
and leads the person there willingly to where they're a willing participant in that conversation. That is the simplicity of what we're doing. And that is the exact degree of complexity that you need to achieve, which ain't that much when you understand the process. And understanding is a good word while we're on it, because I want to talk to you about understanding right now. Understanding is really the key of everything. Look at your own profession. Look at what you do. Okay, let's talk about what you do right now. Your own understanding of the human body, how it operates in its optimum, is actually what equips you to heal, to do what you do. Your understanding, think about it. Now think about how long it took you to gain the amount of knowledge to be able to adjust that spine that's sitting in front of you. And even to diagnose it, look at all the things you had to learn to do to palpate the spine and to take the x-rays and review the x-rays and look at different conditions of the spine and really fully understand. But what did you have to understand first? Function. You had to understand how does the body function in the ideal? Because if you know that, then you know how to fix it. If your iPhone breaks down, what do you do? Do you crack it open and you look at the circuit boards? You don't do that. What you do is you complain, you get frustrated, you get upset, right? That's people's knee-jerk reaction. But what do you do in the end? You go to the Apple store, you talk to a genius, you get a, a tech guy on it, he runs diagnostics on it. He pops it open. He looks at it. He says, X, Y, and Z is wrong with his phone. Why? Because he has a keen understanding. Did he gain that understanding in a five-minute conversation? Did he gain the understanding from watching one video in somebody's office on how to open up a phone and how a circuit board is supposed to work? Or how iOS works? Think about it. He has a keen understanding it took him a while to get, and so do you. And no one is going to get that level of education from you in even just a few visits, in a few videos in your office and some pamphlets and some literature and whatever. Yes, that is the important conversation. And yes, you as doctor, that is the title teacher. It's the highest level bestowed by any university. It means to teach. And that is why it's the highest level. You're a doctor of chiropractic. That means you need to educate and you do. And that educational process never ends. But you can't start the conversation in the middle. And also, you can't just jam all the knowledge you have in the center of you into the center of someone else. Look how long it took you to put it there. Look how many late nights. Look how many cups of coffee. Look how many hours of lost sleep. How many units of lost sanity? How many parties? Uh, you know, like whatever. Like how many things did it take for you to get that level of knowledge and you expect that level of knowledge out of your patients? That's commendable, guys. That's what keeps us driven. So don't ever lose that. But don't ever lose sight of the fact that if it ain't going in, getting frustrated about it is not the problem. It's that you don't understand how to look at a circuit board and you need someone who does. And that is my introduction of myself, because that's what I do. I'm an expert of starting conversations. But let's get a little back on point here. And the point I want to make, I want to go back to frustration at this point. Let's talk about the iPhone going on the fritz or whatever phone you have. And you get frustrated. You want to smash the thing on the floor, right? What were you lacking? You were lacking the understanding of what happened. Otherwise, you would have just cracked it open and fixed it. You wouldn't have worried about it. What did the genius do when he talked to you? He ran routine diagnostics. He figured out what was wrong with it. And then he went and he fixed it. Did he whine? Did he complain? What happens to you when you get a migraine headache sufferer or a chronic neck pain sufferer or someone with scoliosis in your office? Do you get pissed off? Do you start cursing? Do you want to smash the person against the wall? How could they do this to their body? None of that, right? Yes, people can be frustrating. We get frustrated in practice. Have you ever used frustration as your tool to heal? Why not? It's because you have a keen understanding of how the body operates in the ideal. Now, what you need to learn and if you learn anything from me today or ever, 
is how to communicate with somebody to get them interested in having the bigger conversation with you. That conversation came ready-made to have, but it didn't come ready-made to be accepted as a conversation someone wants to have with you. What you need to get keen on is a full understanding of what makes people tick, how they feel about their health, who they are, what their history is, what led them to where they are, what their motivations are, all kinds of things. And when you find out those things, you can have a preliminary conversation that leads into the big conversation that you want to have. That I promise you. But without that, you will never, ever get there. And you will only scrape 10% or less of the people off the face of the earth or the face of your community to be patients in your practice. And most of you will starve doing so. All right, let's round this thing out here. Let's talk about what this rant should mean to you today. I want to recap it, and I want to give you takeaways. Let's talk takeaways. The takeaway is not that the chiropractic message sucks. It's not that you don't know marketing. It's not even that you have to do marketing. Yes, you have to do marketing, but that's an activity. The marketing is not the connection. Successful marketing merely creates a successful bridge between you and the person you need to connect with. But that successful bridge has to bridge over to the actual message you want them to hear. What you have to first understand is you are different in your marketing of your practice than any other product that can be named out there. You're not pizza. 100% of the people either know they love pizza or they at least know the value of pizza and why people would want pizza. So there's no real bridge over a conversation other than this is the best pizza there is. Right now, you're not in competition with other chiropractors. It's not about are you delivering the best brand of chiropractic. It's not even about what chiropractic is. It's about why would I even need to think about listening to a chiropractor, talking to one, or even considering one. That's the conversation that needs to be breached. And to do that, you have to shift someone's viewpoint into the idea that the chiropractic message holds something that they need to know about themselves. And telling them the chiropractic message does not affect that change by virtue of the fact that it took you eight years to master, eight years of wisdom, and a hundred years or so of a profession, give or take a couple of decades, crammed into five minutes is not the solution. What you need to do is create an inner circle and then develop the skill of making people desire to be part of that inner circle. And that inner circle is the place where they achieve the knowledge. So you're not giving somebody their whole bachelor's degree on a subject. You're convincing them to go to college in the first place. That's literally the difference. If I had to sum up today's rant in one concept, it would be the concept of teaching someone four years of college versus convincing them to go to college. That's really the difference. That's all we're talking about here. You're overcomplicating it. So what they didn't teach you in chiropractic school is not marketing and administration. It's how to communicate with people in such a way as to make them interested in finding out more. And that curiosity is something that develops inside of them and is something that motivates them. So you're learning how to motivate people. That they don't teach you in school. That they didn't teach me. And that you didn't teach me. You taught me what you know and the way you've been hacking away at it. And I learned that and I went out and tried it and it didn't work so hot. At least not in all the cases. And yeah, maybe I was a little better at it. I've always been good with people. I've had some native abilities. So I was able to do it better than most people. But even I wasn't satisfied with that. I had to sit there and get in the trenches and figure it out and do thousands of screenings and talk to people. And that's exactly what I did. And now that I've figured that out, 
I can sit here on my soapbox and tell you what you need is the skill of doing that, the skill of talking to people, the skill of getting into their inner circle just enough to figure out and gain their trust and and talk to them and get all warm and fuzzy with them and get them to allow you to ask them a few questions and make them interested in your inner circle and entice them into the idea that they can know more about themselves and that that more that they need to know about themselves is absolutely vital to their survival. If you can achieve that, you will be the most successful chiropractor who ever lived because that's what's not being done right now. And it's not enough just for me to know it, which is why I'm teaching it in my coaching calls, which is why I still go out in the trenches and do screenings Because it needs to be done in volume, and we need to help all we can. And I need your help doing it. I can't do it all myself, folks. I need you guys to learn how to do that. It starts with you getting this concept and drill it through that skull of yours and let it flow through your nervous system. This is the most vital component of what it is we're trying to do here. It's more important than the chiropractic message itself. It's more important than the chiropractic adjustment. It's even more important than the assessment, diagnosis, and report of findings with a patient. This is that initial connection that allows all of that to happen. You can be the greatest salesperson in the world, but if you don't have anyone sitting in front of you, you're going to sell zero. So even if you're great at selling treatment programs to people, if you have no prospects to sit in front of you, it's not going to matter. And there's one more thing that you should take away. And that is that because I've been saying this for years about salespeople, the best salesman on the planet, if he has no prospects, is going to be a zero. But on top of that, the best salesman on the planet, if he has really crap quality prospects, which means that they are not interested in hearing what he has to say or the subject matter that he has to offer, he's still going to bat zero. And it's the same thing. The chiropractor, who's the greatest closer of treatment plans known to man is only good with those people whose interest level has been elevated to a level where they're ready to receive it. Because if you took that same chiropractor and put a bunch of disinterested people in front of him, he's going to close zero as well. And maybe not zero, maybe he'll still get one or two because he's just that good, but he's not going to get everybody. And that's what we need to work on right now. That's what I want you to take away from today's Road Rant. Folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm really happy that you joined me for today's Road Rant. This is actually a really important one. If you notice, we went way over time. These rants are supposed to be, you know, no more than 10 to 15 minutes. But today I had to get on this soapbox and absolutely get this out to you because it's probably the most important podcast I've done thus far. If there's any episode that you've ever listened to that you took anything away from, it should be this one. I can say that with 100% certainty, so I hope you take this to heart. Go out and apply it. Please reach out to me and contact me if you have questions about this. I would love to have a dialogue about it in depth. I'd love to assess your situation for you. Get in contact with me and reach out, and we'll set up a time. I'll send you my schedule, and you can pick a time where you can have 15 minutes with me on the phone, and I'll even help pick out out of what you're doing right now which pieces of this podcast actually apply to you, and I'll help you assess that. You have my guarantee on that. So email me, frank at screeningexperts.com. Any information on the show and our sister show, Will Work for Patients, go to willworkforpatients.com. And you will find all the information about that. That's will work the number four patients.com. And if you want information on road rants, will work for patients.com slash road rants. And you'll find all the information that you need there. And that's the entirety all the way down to the bottom of the can of whoop ass I wanted to open on you today. Now go out and open up a can of whoop ass on everyone else. Let's break those barriers. Let's intersect those inner circles and let's get more people under chiropractic care than we ever have. And I'll see you in the next episode of Road Rants Radio. Be good. Road Rants Radio is...
is a broadcast wellness production powered by screening experts. Executive producer, Frank Sardella. For more information, visit woolworkforpatients.com slash roadrants.